1971, the U.S. stopped uh, exchanging gold, uh, and so that pegged exchange rate with the U.S. dollar disappeared. So since then, in Canada, we have had what is called a managed float. When it comes to a managed float, uh, exchange rates, so the value of the Canadian dollar, oops, here's demand, here's supply, what this exchange rate is, one Canadian dollar equals some amount, say US dollars. This is now determined based on supply and demand. Now it's not completely floating on its own, it's not completely up to the market, we manage it. So we can actually influence the exchange rate by changing demand and changing supply for the currency. So we're going to look now at how a managed float works. How does supply and demand determine the exchange rate? And what changes supply and demand to cause your exchange rate to appreciate or depreciate? So let's take a look at what determines your exchange rate. So exchange rates are determined really by two things. Demand and supply, so changes in demand, changes in supply, change your exchange rate. And then there's purchasing power parity. So let's start first by looking at purchasing power parity. Purchasing power parity means exchange rates will change so as to equate the purchasing power of each currency. The idea is, is that if you have um, the exact same goods in two countries, so let's say that for this good it costs you 10 bucks to buy it US. Okay, if you take those $10 US that you would have spent on the good, and you take those $10 and you convert it into Canadian dollars, then whatever that exchange rate is should change the $10 US into the amount Canadian that allows you to purchase that same good. So your purchasing power, what you can get with your money, should be the same in two countries, and the exchange rate changes to allow for that. So we don't have to spend $10 US to buy the good and $10 Canadian to buy the good, it's the fact that once you convert the currency from one to the other, it'll convert it to the amount you need to buy the same amount of goods that you bought before. If we're not at purchasing power parity, then arbitrage is possible. Arbitrage is the ability to profit off of discrepancies in currency values. So let's look at an example. All right, so let's look at an Escalade. Okay, so let's assume that in the U.S. an Escalade costs about 63170 And in Canada, that same Escalade is 80210 All right. There is a difference here in price, and that difference here is quite a big difference. It's got to be more than just an exchange rate issue. So, okay, so what do we do? Well, if you are a Canadian and you want to buy an Escalade, it's cheaper to go across the border, buy an Escalade in the U.S., and bring it back. Okay, so if you were to do that, what would happen to the demand for U.S. cars? So if Canadians are going across the border to buy um, Escalades in the U.S., the demand for U.S. cars would go up. And when there's an increase in demand for goods, what does that do to the price? Well, it makes the price go up. So if we're going across the border and buying U.S. Escalades, then that's going to make the price go up in the US. Well, what's happening to the demand for Canadian Escalades? Well, if we're all going across the border where it's cheaper to get an Escalade, then demand for Canadian cars is going down. We stop buying the Canadian ones, we go across the border and get the American ones. So demand decreases. And when demand decreases for the Canadian cars, it makes the price go down. 
And so with arbitrage, since we can profit from a discrepancy in price, and we're going to buy in the cheap market and sell in the, in the higher priced market, it's going to make the price in the cheaper market go up and the price in the higher price market go down. And it's going to change until the only difference in prices of Escalades is the exchange rate. So if we're spending 63170 on an Escalade in the U.S., then we should be able to convert those U.S. dollars to Canadian dollars. And when you do that conversion, that amount that you get should buy you an Escalade. If they're not at purchasing power parity, then when you buy that $63,000 Escalade in the U.S. and you convert the money into Canadian dollars, if it's still less than the $80,000 Escalade here in Canada, there's an opportunity for profit, right? Because you can take that American Escalade, sell it for the $80,000, and pocket that difference, make profit off of it. So when we do that then, we can start to figure out what the exchange rate should be because of purchasing power parity. So when we look at that $63,000 Escalade in the US and $80,000 one in Canada, we can figure out what the exchange rate should be. So one US dollar would be equal to the number, the Canadian value of the vehicle over the US value of the vehicle. So the Canadian value of the vehicle was 80,210. The US value of the vehicle was 63,170. So if we take 80 to 10, divide by 63,170, we get 1.27 Canadian. So according to the values of the Escalades, the exchange rate should be 1 US dollar equals 1.27 Canadian or 1 Canadian and then we take US dollar vehicle over Canadian dollar vehicle so 63,170 over 8210 1 Canadian dollar is equal to 63,170 divided by 82,10 and our exchange rate should be seven, 1 Canadian dollar equals 79 cents US. We can then compare the to the exchange rate that it actually is and if we do that let's look at One Canadian dollar, so Canadian, oops, Canadian dollar to US dollar. So one Canadian dollar equals 78 cents US. Let's go back. So if where it actually is, that's not too bad, it's been <laughs> quite different in the past. Um, one Canadian dollar equals 78 cents US, then here's where it is. According to purchasing power parity, when we look at Escalades, it should be one Canadian dollar equals 79 cents US. So what that's saying is that the amount that it is, is less than the amount it should be. And if it is less than it should be, then it is undervalued. And we expect then that the currency in the future, the Canadian dollar will strengthen compared to the US dollar as it goes towards uh, purchasing power parity. Well, we looked at this with Escalades. Well, we can also look at this uh, with the Big Mac index. And the Big Mac index looks at the value of currency, whether it's under or overvalued. <coughs> by looking at the common good of a Big Mac. Because a Big Mac is one of the few goods that is essentially the same in all different countries. So the economist does an analysis of the price of Big Macs across the world and compares them to the US. 
and it helps us to figure out whether the currency is under or overvalued. So on this graph here, what you see is the bars that go to the left, those currencies are undervalued compared to the US dollar. And the currencies that go to the right are overvalued. So this compares us to US dollars, but it doesn't allow us to look at um, how we compare, how Canada, for example, compares to other currencies. So it just tells you compared to the US. We can use information from the Big Mac index to figure out, though, if Canadian dollar is under or overvalued um, by taking the price of a Big Mac and looking at how it compares in the two different countries. So instead of comparing Escalades, like we did in the example before, we could actually look at it in terms of Big Macs. In which case, we would want to go to the Big Mac Index and Canada website, and we would want to then pull how much a Big Mac is in Canadian dollars, so 597, and how much a Big Mac is in another country. So let's look at China. Okay, so the Chinese won. If you were to buy a Big Mac in China, it would be 19.80. So let's just go back to our calculations here. All right. So one Big Mac in Canada is... $5.97. One Big Mac in the Chinese yuan is, my apologies, I forgot what the number is, 18 something, 19.8. Eight, 19.8. Oops. So now we need to figure out what is the Canadian dollar worth. So one Canadian dollar is equal to 19.8 divided by 5.97. Point three three Chinese won, and we talked before about how the exchange rate right now is one Canadian dollar equals let's go back here in our slides we have that previous so we can get it to show up back in our notes. We had one Canadian dollar is equal to 5.13 Chinese won, or one Chinese won is equal to 0.19 Canadian. All right. So one Canadian dollar equals Canadian dollar equals 5.13 Chinese yuan. Okay. Wait a second, our calculation here is not right. Let's take that back. It's not 1.98 divided by 5.97, it's 19.8 divided by 5.97 equals 3.32 Chinese yuan. So if we're looking at this is what it should be, this is what it is. Now the complaints against China have been that the Chinese currency is undervalued. This looks at the Canadian dollar. So let's turn it into one Chinese won. One Chinese won is equal to 5.97 divided by 19.8. 
So we do that. Oops. 5.97 divided by 19.8. And we get 0.3 Canadian dollars. And one Chinese won is equal to one divided by 5.13. Right, because we invert it to get the other one. One divided by 5.13 is 0.19. So this is what it is. This is what purchasing power parity says it should be. And so we can see that where it is, is less than where it should be. And so we can see the Chinese yuan is undervalued.